So in um, in Western countries, um, red tends to evoke um, excitement, danger, urgency, and love. Um, when it's combined with green, um, it becomes festive. You know, someone mentioned Christmas earlier. Um, in other countries, though, I thank you, Ching, for bringing up um, China. It means fortune and luck. Um, but in India, um, it's a traditionally or it's traditionally worn for weddings. Um, it's considered a color of purity. Um, in Latin America, um, it has religious connotations. Um, in the Middle East, it evokes danger and caution. Um, so at, like in in these different countries, it can have different meanings, too, just depending on where we're from. So let's take a look at another color. Let's look at blue. And someone just shared uh, the blue moon that got me thinking about, you know, when we uh, talk about sadness, we tend to talk about feeling blue, feeling down, um, which is interesting because we're just talking about how calm and relaxing blue can be also. <laughs> so it has these two different feelings. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, in the chat, we've got swimming pool and depressed, lonely, birds royalty that's true in a lot of um western cultures blue um tends to evoke feelings of like safety and trust um because it's a common uh, it's color that's commonly associated with like masculinity and um, authority and loyalty and security we see police officers tend to wear blue um military some of the military wear blue um, and, and for that reason, um, that safety and trust, you see a lot of banks <laughs> use the color blue in their logos. It's one of the most common colors that's used in American marketing, and it's because it's considered a safe color worldwide. You know, we were just talking about how um, red can be a negative and a positive, um, depending on the country you're, you're from. Uh, but blue is considered that safe culture uh, or safe color that's um, OK for all cultures uh, because it really doesn't have a super negative connotation at all. Um, yeah, they see in the chat, um, uh, people are sharing some more about, um, if you're wearing blue clothes, it makes you stand out as cool and relaxed. I like that. <laughs> and, ah, that's great. Um, blue dyes, uh, tend to be more expensive too. Blue and purple were harder colors to, or harder pigments to get. Um, so they were considered like wealthy colors. That's true. Several Eastern cultures, uh, blue is tied to, um, immortality and spirituality, um, in Hinduism specifically, uh, that color is associated with Krishna, um, who uh, embodies uh, love and divine joy. Um, and in Catholicism, like that was Mary, that was the Virgin Mary's color was blue. Um, so it has some religious connotations as well. Let's look at another color. Green.
I know I was sharing earlier about how in 18th century Europe, uh, green was like the color of death and poison because it was um, associated with the green pigment that was in, or the arsenic that was in the green pigment at that time. Um, so it's funny how that meaning has changed over time as well. <laughs> See in the chat, um, we have St. Patrick's Day um, grass. I think someone uh, mentioned Christmas earlier too. So in, in Western cultures, uh, green is often associated with like the environment, uh, with progress, with luck. Um, it's considered, uh, uh, the color is considered safe and healthy, uh, promoting like growth and longevity. Um, but it also brings up negative connotations like we just talked about, um, especially in places like India. Um, green is considered a forbidden color, um, representing infidelity, um, and exorcism. Um, I think it's the national color of Mexico um, that stands for like independence and patriotism. In South America, it's the color of death. Um, it also uh, has strong uh, associations with Islam. Um, and it's in a lot of flags, too. Um, so it's got a variety of of meanings um, as well. Let's move on to another color, orange. Like with uh, working with essential oils, that orange, that citrus um, is like um, a fragrance of like clean um, antibacterial. Uh, it has that kind of feel too. Um, and health, like when you think about act like orange, oranges. One of the studies I read about color talked about how orange was the color of creativity um, and like waking up and energize. It was an energizing color. Um, so, I mean, it has a lot of meanings too. In, um, Western cultures, orange typically represents, uh, like autumn and warmth and harvest. Um, but in the Middle East, it's associated with mourning and loss. Um, I think Eastern, uh, countries link orange to love and happiness, um, and good health, um, and in Japanese culture, orange symbolizes love, courage, and happiness. Uh, so it's another one that has um, meaning kind of across the board. Let's move on to another color. Let's look at yellow for a while. In the U.S. Uh, specifically, uh, yellow is always seen, um, typically seen as this really bright, cheery color, um, generally associated with like happiness and optimism and warmth. Um, but it does across the globe um, 
tend to have more negative connotations um, than other colors. Um, in Egypt and Latin America, the color is linked to death and mourning. Um, for Germans, it's typically symbolized uh, symbolizes um, envy and jealousy. Yeah. Let's take a look at another color. Look at brown. I think uh, in the U.S., we see brown as um, dependable and stable. Um, a lot of food containers um, are traditionally brown. Um, uh, and it's a color that's used by delivery companies like UPS specifically. Um, but in the Middle East, brown is uh, viewed as a comfortable color um, connected to the earth. Um, but in Latin American countries like Colombia and Nicaragua, um, the color is uh, like met with disapproval, really. Um, and and um, in some Eastern countries like India, um, they associate brown with mourning um, and sorrow. Someone just put in the chat um, cozy. Um, cozy colors for clothes. And I do, I think cozy is a word that I associate with brown. And I think a lot of that has to do with like a warm cup of coffee or um, like uh, firewood. Like I think about like those cozy, cozy things that go along with brown. It's a good one for sure. All right. Just real quickly, we'll touch on um, two more colors before we move on. About black. I know there's not really much of a shade change in this one <laughs> variety, um, but what, what comes to mind when we think about uh, the color black? I know uh, we were just talking about how like um, black can be a classy color, like with tuxedos or um, elegant events, but it can also be like a color of mourning um, and death. I see that in the chat too. Uh, black cats, sadness, finality, depression, elegance, sophistication, outer space, shadows. Oh, these are great associations. Black Sharpies, licorice. <laughs> I see in the chat we have contemplation, TV, profound, black is easy to match with. That's true. I tend to wear a lot of black, um, and a lot of that is because I am really messy when it comes to art making. And if I wear black, no one sees how messy I am. <laughs> you don't see the stains that are all over my clothes. Yeah. Let's look at one more color today. This one also does not have a great a variety of, of shade here, hues, um, but white. What are some of the things that pop into your head when you think about the color white?
you think of um i usually think of when i think of white i think of like sterile like um and i also get nervous um just for the basically the same reason why i wear black um white gets dirty so quick and it's so evident when you make a mess i want to skip a couple colors and just talk for a moment about um frida kahlo um she is probably one of the most recognizable um artists in the world um if you haven't seen her work you know her her look she's the the artist that had flowers in her hair and a unibrow like we we um she's recognizable um but she actually i don't know if anyone has had the opportunity to read her journal she kept a journal, um, which is really fascinating. Um, but in one of the pages of her journal, of her diary, um, she wrote down um, kind of this stream of consciousness of what colors meant to her. She had a cup of colored pencils sitting on her desk and she just went through. And you can see this is a page from her journal. She used that color and wrote her meanings for those colors. And so I, I wanted to share this um, before we moved on. Because it's a little different. Some of her meanings are a little different than what we've been talking about just now. Um, and so green, you can see green is, um, for her, green was a good warm light. Uh, magenta was ad Aztec, old lapily blood of the prickly pear, uh, the brightest and oldest. Uh, brown, the color of mole, of leaves becoming earth. Yellow, uh, madness, sickness, fear, uh, part of the sun and of happiness. Blue is electricity and purity love. Black, nothing is black, really nothing. <laughs> Olive, uh, leaves, sadness, science, the whole of Germany is this color. Um, yellow, more madness and mystery. All the ghosts wear clothes of this color, or at least they're underclothes. <laughs> Dark blue, the color of bad ad advertisements and of good business. Blue, distance, tenderness can also be uh, this blue blood. And so I just kind of want to end um, by just kind of going over like she had and you can see she's uh, got different shades of blue. If you look at her page, she's got different shades of blue. And even in just those shades, they can have some different meanings. And so what I want to say, think about in the next few moments that we have um, is like some of these color meanings are universal. Some of these color meanings are cultural. Um, some of these color meanings are very personal. Um, like one color can mean something good to one person and something bad to another. Um, and 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 I hope like our discussion today and uh, looking at Frida Kahlo's journal um, kind of illustrates that a little bit. Um, but what I'd like to do just to kind of end our time together today Let's have a little personal reflection. Uh, so if you have that page in your journal or a piece of paper, then just take a moment, pull that out and grab a pen or colored pencil, whatever you have. And we're just to kind of think about um, our color meanings. So you don't have to say anything. Don't worry about putting it in the chat, but just take a moment. And um, as I kind of go through a couple um, um questions, I guess. I want you to write down um, what pops into your head. It doesn't have to be a perfect sentence. It can be bullet points or just little um, like random words, um, but just write down um, what pops into your head. Right. So I want you to think of the color that you would consider your favorite, your favorite color. Um, if someone asked what your favorite color was, what would that be? Um, go ahead and write that down. moment to think about why. What is it about that association to that color that makes it your favorite? Go ahead and write that down too. Again, it doesn't have to be a huge <laughs> sentence or essay. It can be just a couple words. It's the color that you wear the most. Maybe it's the same color, maybe it's two or three colors. Um, think about why. Does it look good on your skin? Does it hide your messes? <laughs> Why do you wear that color the most? Let's think about 
um, the color that you decorate your house with. Maybe that changes room to room. If you were to walk through your house just now, is there a color that stands out, a color or two that jump out at you? Mm -hmm. And write that down. And then take a moment to think about why. Are there certain associations that come with that color? Memories? Emotions? Think about the color that you associate with happiness. If you could give happiness or joy a color, what would that color be? It's also okay not to answer <laughs> these questions too. Just take a moment to think about what that color would be and why you might choose that color to be happiness. Next, I want you to think about the color that you try to avoid. <laughs> Maybe there's a color that brings you anxiety or uh, stress. Maybe it's just a, um, you see it as maybe not a, not a good color. Just a color you try to avoid. Then take a moment to just think about why. 